I was greatly encouraged this morning upon arriving at the meeting almost everyone that I went to greet said to me don't touch me (laughs) I'm sick I don't want you to get what I have But for those of you who have known me over the years, there's an official greeting that you get from Brother Joe, whether you're sick or whether you're well. But I was encouraged by the effort that saints who are not feeling well, they says, I want to be where the Lord is. And, you know, that's an encouragement. Yes, we get sick, and we take into consideration the saints that, yes, they might get what you have, and you don't like what you have, so they wouldn't like what you give them. But it's nice to keep in mind that I am going to meet the Lord. So for those of you who venture out this morning, And you were sick. We thank the Lord that you're here. We have been encouraged by your presence. Hurry up and get home so that you will not spread your germs to all of us who are well, okay? And I heard there is some families uh, have experienced death in their family, and they have to attend to matters. Brethren, this is the reality of life. These things occur. So because we have schedules and appointments, I'll take a few minutes and we'll read from Psalm 77, the 77th Psalm. Psalm 77. Beginning at verse 1. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave air unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever, that his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies, Selah? And I said, This is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord, surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Beloved saints, it's not only that we as God's people experience sickness and death, But we also experience the trials of life. Trials which at times leads us to be very discouraged. And amongst God's people, there is much discouragement. Sometimes the trials can be so overwhelming that we say, As the psalmist said in one of the psalms, if I had wings like a dove, 
then I will fly away and be at rest. So many of God's people feel that way. Just want to get away from it all. But that's not the answer. When trials come, when difficulties come, it is God allowing you to go through these exercises so that you can be a better Christian. It's like you walk into the classroom on any given day and the teacher says, put your books away, we're having a surprise test. All you teachers in the house this day. And there goes the hearts of the children. A surprise test. And people like me who don't like to study, that's the last thing you want to hear coming from the lips of a teacher. A surprise test. And it's that way at times with the Lord. There are some surprise tests. Things that we are not prepared for. But things that are necessary for us. And the psalmist in this psalm is going through some difficult times. And I trust that as we look at his experience, we can somehow identify ourselves with it. And find encouragement to go on. Because, beloved saints, the trials are to make you a better Christian. If you can accept that, it helps you as you go through these difficulties. So he says in verse 1, I cried unto God and my voice, with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave air unto me. This is the exercise that you and I should find ourselves in, in the midst of difficulties. Because what I have discovered is the most difficult thing to do in the times of difficulties is to fall on one's knees and pray. It's very difficult. That the last person you want to talk to about that which you are experiencing is the Lord. And in reality, he should be the first one that we should call upon in times of difficulty. But being who we are, he is the last one. At times, he's not even the one we call upon. We call upon everybody else to share the difficulty with but the Lord. So the psalmist is saying, I cried and the Lord heard me. Then in verse 2, he says, In the day of my trouble, I saw the Lord. My soul ran into the night. And cease not, my soul refused to be comforted. Have we experienced times like these? When the trials, the burdens, the difficulties are so overwhelming that we are crying to the Lord and it seems to be no response from heaven in regards to that which we are going through. Then he goes on to say, I remembered God and was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed. This is what the psalmist is experiencing in the midst of his difficulties. As though there is no light at the end of the tunnel for that which he is going through. But listen to what he says. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. And I am so troubled that I cannot speak. That's in verse 4. Ever had some sleepless nights? When you are there and your eyes refuse to to close? Just mulling over the things that are troubling you? But even worse than that, listen to what he says. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. Have you been there? That you cannot speak? You cannot sleep? And the trouble still exists? Well, beloved saints, who are you going to turn to? This is what the psalmist was experiencing 
as he is going through these difficulties. These are what he is feeling. It seems as though that God was so, was so far from him that he is crying to the Lord. Though he's getting an answer, you know, the trouble still exists. He says, I'm there in the bed just counting the sheep and I'm crying to God and there seems to be no answer. Beloved saints, these are some of the things that you and I experience in our daily life as the trials come upon us. But we want to learn from the psalmist how you go through these difficulties. Because one of the things I find that uh, we come short in is being able to encourage each other as we are going through difficult times. You know, so often we hear, don't worry, God is going to take care of it. Don't worry. And even at times when we are going through sorrow and it's for an extended period of time, the insensitivity of saying, but why are you still crying? Why are you still sorrowing? Oh, beloved saints, we have to understand when the difficulties come, when the sorrows come, at times it may last a long period of time. Each one is totally different. And I remember, beloved, it's, it's reading how Jacob felt towards his son Joseph that helped me to really understand at times what saints are going through. Mind you, Jacob felt that uh, Joseph was dead for all terms and purposes. Joseph was dead. Seventeen years later, Jacob felt as though it happened yesterday. That, that loss of a son Oh, beloved, do you and I feel for the saints when death comes in? A child has been, uh, has been killed. A mother has been stricken with cancer. A father had a stroke. Do you and I enter into what saints are going through in the midst of those trials? Don't tell them, get over it. No. We're guilty, brethren. Spirituality has nothing to do with it. If you are sorrowing, you are sorrowing. If you are hurt, you are hurt. And it's the Lord who gives the comfort and teaches you precious lessons in the midst of all of these trials. And even at times when you lie in your bed and you cannot sleep and you cannot pray, we thank God for His Spirit that tells the Word of God tells us that His Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered even at times when we do not know how to pray. This is the reality of life. The trials are there. The difficulties are there. God gives us the grace so that we can go through. I beg my brethren, saints may be going through trials, and saints go through trials. Be very sensitive to them. Be sensitive to them. We have lost many. Because they have said, no one cares. There is no love. You know why? We were not sensitive to what they were going through. And the psalmist says, Thou holdest my eyes open, cannot sleep. I am troubled that I cannot speak. And beloved saints, I have been there. I have been there. But one of the things that helps us as we go through trials and difficulties is for us to remember. If you can, and there are some older saints with us, 
And they can tell us stories as to how the Lord dealt with them in the past, how he brought them through. We thank God for those testimonies. It is remembering how God brought you through that helps you to appreciate the present that he is able to do it again. You have to be able to see, looking back on your past experiences, the Lord helped. The Lord brought us through. How many of us has financial needs? Oh yeah. Did the Lord come in for, answer your prayer and came in at moments when you felt all was hopeless? Sickness? When you thought all hope was gone, did the Lord come in and, and show that he was mighty and was able to deliver? Beloved saints, these are the marks that God has left for us. And he says, when you are going through your difficult times, when you are going through your trials, just remember how I have been with you in the past. It helps us in the present and it will help us in the future. God has been faithful to us. And the psalmist says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. And as the new hymn, oh, who is the young people? And as, I sp and as you speak, a hundred billion failure disappear. You remember that? Yes, Sister Misha, you remember that? You lost your life so I can find it here. If you left the grave behind you, what? So will I. Yes, so will I. Because we acknowledge a hundred billion times the Lord has been faithful to us. And if that's the past, he will be faithful to us in the present. I remember. I remember my song in the night, oh beloved saints. This is what God is able to do. He gives us songs in the night. There are those who are widows. There are those who are widowers and they're still hurting because of that loss, because of that void. God gives songs in the night. Comforts the heart of his people. He's able, beloved saints. I remember, when I call to remember my song in the night, I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. This is what God gives in the midst of trials, in the midst of difficulties. And then the psalmist says, will the Lord cast off forever? Have you questioned the Lord? Look at the question he's asking. Right? Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Remember what the prophet says in the book of Lamentation? Thy mercies are new Every morning, great is thy faithfulness. Beloved saints, the prophet was there just sulking. Oh, this is what I'm going through. This is how I feel. Look at all of the circumstances that are around us. Oh, it's doomed. It's gloom. But then he took his eyes off of the circumstances and he put his eyes upon the Lord and he says, despite of what I'm going through, the faithfulness of God is great. His mercies have been renewed to me every morning. Oh, beloved saints, you and I need to get there to recognize that God will always be faithful to his people. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? That his promise fail forevermore? Oh, beloved saints, when God makes promises, he keeps. 
We saw that last night with Abraham. He made a promise to him. And despite of the circumstances, Abraham, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. Despite what has happened, God saw to it that there was a great nation formed. He brought, he took, they took them out of Egypt and he took them into the land of Canaan. Oh, beloved saints, regardless of the circumstances, the promises of God remains ever sure. Hath he forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And the answer is no, no. And I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the, wor the wonders of, thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy works, and talk of thy doings. Then in verse 13 he says, Thy ways, O God, is in the sanctuary. And then in verse 19 he says, Thy way is in the sea. Just want to touch on those two points, and we're going to close. You see, for most of us, including yours truly, I want the sanctuary experiences. You see, the sanctuary experiences are not all that difficult. And what I mean is that you have a headache, you can easily get some Motrin, ibuprofen, bang, the headache is gone. That's sanctuary experiences. You don't have to pray and ask the Lord to deliver you from that. You go to CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreen, Walmart, you get it at a discount, and you say, look, relief is here. Upset stomach? <laughs> Rolades, pepto bismol all of these things, those are sanctuary experiences. We don't call upon the Lord in times of those kind of troubles. But we need him. There are experiences that we go through, beloved saints, that his ways are in the sanctuary. It's not all that difficult for us. But yet they are lessons he's trying to teach us in the midst of all of those trials. The sanctuary, his ways are in the sanctuary. But his ways are also in the sea. Those are the more difficult experiences for us. I say, Brother Joe, what do you mean? You know, as we were driving on your, your 495 and your 270 and your 95, they had all these dotted lines. To keep the New York drivers on a straight path. There were signs that said yield. So the New York drivers has to yield. Then there were some solid lines. New York drivers you can't cross those solid lines. Let me ask you something. Have you ever seen dotted lines on the ocean? Have you ever seen signs on the ocean yield? Oh no. Beloved saints, the ways of God on the seas are totally different from his ways in the sanctuary. You see, when you go on the high seas, when you have those experiences, when you simply have to depend on the Lord, beloved, when the great storm comes in your life, Beloved saints, when the difficulties, when the wave starts roaring, when the, the wind starts howling on the seas and these difficult experiences come, there are no direction, there are no footprints on the water and the, on the ocean. 
There is who are you going to follow? The thing is, beloved saints, the captain of the ship, when the storm rises, when the wind starts blowing, he depends on his instrument. And you and I, beloved, as we are going through the difficult times in our life, we have to depend on the instruments that God has given to us. His word. These are his ways on the seas. The poet says he's going through circumstances. And he says, Lord, it seems as though when I was going through some of these deepest circumstances, I look back. And all I saw in the sand were one set of footprints. Beloved saints, do you and I feel that way sometimes? That the Lord has abandoned us. And there's only one set of footprints, but take some shoe size measurements. The one set of footprints that you're seeing in the sand, beloved, it's not yours. It's not yours. It's then he realized The Lord can respond, my child, when you saw the one set of footprints in the sand, that's when I was carrying you. So often the presence of the Lord is not felt as we are going through the difficult times in our lives. These are the ways of God on the seas. There are no direction. There are no dotted lines. All the captain does is depend on his instruments to carry him through. Beloved saints, the Lord has given to us his word. He has given to us his presence. He has given to us his spirit. In the midst of difficult times, these instruments we take advantage of. You know, because flying so much, you know, when you look up in the sky and you see all these planes, many of us think, you know, it's just pie in the sky up there. But I've been through some turbulence, beloved saints, up there. And the only thing I could have said when turbulence hit I am 41,000 feet closer to heaven. I am telling you, when that plane started to do, and the cap, you hear, ping, ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Let me ask you something. If you really think a fastened seatbelt can save you up there, no, it's the grace of God. And there are times, beloved, it's not just minutes. You go through turbulence for hours. People start go <laughs> up there <laughs> because it's difficult. This is what happens to us at times. They are rough situations, difficult. But God says, I can carry you through. You trust the instrument. Trust the instruments. So we want to encourage ourselves, beloved. Get to know your instruments. Get to know what some of the promises of God are. Get to know how God has led you in the past and brought you out in the past. Get to know these things so that when the difficult times come, and say, yes, I remember. I remember how the Lord helped in that situation. And if he did it back then, he's able to do it now. Young people, I see, I saw you took the back row of seats. But always remember, Brother Joe doesn't have a soft voice. Say that to yourself. Brother Joe doesn't have a soft voice. I'm going to come at you right now. Yeah. 
you thought you were getting away today. No Sunday school, huh? <laughs> what we want to encourage as nice, lovely young people. Don't allow discouragement to drive you away from the Lord. Remember, Brother Joe told you that. What helps is developing your personal relationship with Him. It helps. It's not mommy and daddy all the time. Yeah, I know when it comes to food, it's always mommy. But after a while, that has to stop. It has to stop. Mommy has to say, look, prepare it yourself. Even my wife has done the same. You can have whatever you want today. Fix it yourself. <laughs> but you need to develop. That personal relationship with the Lord. You see, the story is told of this young boy that got saved. And because he was living in a village, you know, not in these nice homes and so forth that we have. He was in a village where it's just one room. Everyone shares that one room. But because he came to know the Lord Jesus as his Savior, what he would do is he would leave that little hut and go out and find a solitary place so that he can spend with the Lord. But you know what happens when you start walking on a particular path every day. Your feet start trampling the grass. And the grass begins to wear out. That's a sign that you are maintaining that personal relationship with the Lord. You find time. You take time. You make time to spend with the Lord. But there was a certain occasion in his life. And it was observed by an older brother. The grass began to grow. I say to us young people, be careful when the grass begins to grow. You want me to explain it? You see, what happens is that because he wasn't walking on the grass, on that pathway, as he used to, the grass began to grow. And it was an older brother who recognized that the grass was growing again. He went to the young man. And we need brothers and sisters like this. Older brothers, older sisters, you have to be aware as to when the grass is beginning to grow again in the lives of our young people. Don't let the grass grow that tall. And then they're able to sneak through the grass and go away from the hut. No. He went to him and says, look. I noticed the grass is growing on that path. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's going on? Beloved saints, we need ministry like that today. But I say to my young people, love you all. Don't allow discouragement to drive you from the things of the Lord. I want you to be steadfast. I want you to be unmovable. Don't let the trial shake your faith and throw you down. And then, oh, what? No. You have to be strong. And you know what makes you strong? trials. Read what Peter says about the trials. Read what James says about the trials. It is there to make us better Christians. 
So the psalmist went through these experiences. He went through these experiences. He couldn't pray. He couldn't sleep. He felt God was at, a, was at a distance. He questioned God. All of these things we experience. But then he recognized. There are ways of God that we cannot fully understand as well. But what we have to do is to remain faithful to him. May the Lord encourage us. Let us keep praying for one another as we are experiencing different things in our lives. May we be sensitive to the needs that 